Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's URC Round 4 Preview. And basically how we're going to be doing this is we're going to be looking at five key aspects of the weekend to look out for. Sort of the main sort of focal points, if you will, of the weekend. It's going to be a very exciting weekend. A sold out pro park awaits Leinster and Munster Lions as well as the Bulls go overseas. All four South African sides will be playing away from home this weekend. Big opportunities for the likes of in Edinburgh, for example, at Benetton to try and get their first uh, wins of the weekend, or sorry, of the season rather, after having, uh, well, for Edinburgh, lost three in a row, Benetton having lost one, lost two, drawn one, and uh, Scarlet as well, uh, also the, uh, winless at the moment, but a pretty tough game for them to go this weekend. Before we look at it, please do smash like on the video, please do subscribe to the channel as well. Let's look at the biggest uh, focus point, which is point number one. Right, so as mentioned, a sold-out Croke Park is what awaits this weekend. Leinster versus Munster. It's going to be absolutely epic. 80,000 fans for what is arguably the biggest match in the URC. It is uh, the team that has never won the competition since uh, its inception and yet go into every single season as favourites in Leinster. They are currently three from three. And Munster, after a horrific start, losing to Zebra in that turf sort of uh, in a couple of weeks ago, they uh, will need to try and bounce back and uh, prove a point. They are former champions. If you go back to um, a little over a year ago, won the tournament and yet uh, have not started the season like they would want to. And if there was ever a team, ever a, a match, for example, to really rise to the occasion and uh, show everybody that they're still there, it is this weekend. And uh, from a South African fan, really excited to see what RK Stamen could do. But I think just an occasion, you know, sold out Croke Park, one of the biggest stadiums in Ireland. I think it might actually even be the biggest stadium in Ireland. And uh, it's going to be absolutely amazing. I think we're going to see more games like this. And this is what we need from a league point of view. You know, talk about the URC. It's these games, it's kind of occasions like this. Uh, you know, even like D-Day, for example, um, you know, in in, uh, in in Wales, we've got the, you know, both, all, all four regions playing in the same same stadium, same day type of vibe. It's these kind of occasions to really sort of show you the value of the URC and just how well they are doing. And uh, this is going to be one hell of a clash. So the Lions, two from two, uh, currently sit as the highest ranked South African team with a perfect 10 points out of possible 10 and a 47 point um points difference they've been tremendous so far uh, they blitzed the Edinburgh last week in the first half uh, had a bit of a sketchy second half but the damage was already done now they go overseas but they're playing against Dragons on Sunday at half past three South can stand at time it is a game that they'll expect to, not expect to win but they'll, they'll they'll look at it and say it's very winnable Dragons are not a phenomenal side just the one win from two games so far uh, this season that one win uh, coming against the Ospreys a two-point win they were then hammered by Leinster and uh, almost beat the Sharks last weekend, which is probably a bit of a warning sign for Lions in terms of don't underestimate them. But the way the Lions are playing, if they can string together that kind of performance, they could very much go three from three. And uh, they're sitting with 14 points out of a possible 15, for example. After three games, it would be a phenomenal start uh, for Cash Renoir and, and uh, thoroughly deserve it. Team is playing well, team is playing confidence, couple of changes, for example, very much going with a very big impact off the bench. Marius Lewis and the Hamba Hinker from Bake, for example, continuing their roles off the bench. Very big weekend for the Lions, and for me, a massive opportunity for them to, to throw them in the mix nice and early. So, whilst it hasn't been an awful start for the Sharks, uh, results-wise, they have not been good enough so far this season. A uh, 36-30 loss to Connacht, and then just edging the Dragons last weekend, scoring right at the end. A uh, very dramatic win. This is a shark side that, yes, are missing a lot of spring box. There's no doubt about that. There's no Vincent Cock, no Sia Khaleesi, Bongi Benambi, Eben Etzebet, Lukanya, uh, Maxwell Mapimpi, um, Apele Fassi, Oxen Chair, uh, you know, to, to name a few. You know, there are lots of players missing, but it's still an absolutely quality outfit, and there's quality throughout that side. And uh, they've still yet to really sort of pitch up and show everybody why they could potentially be contenders. And uh, I think this weekend, they've got to show something. They're taking on Benetton. It is away. And Benetton at the moment, winless so far. So it's not going to be an easy game for the Sharks, but it's a game that they've got to target to, as a performance point of view, you know. Uh, not been good enough so far um, in terms of what they're seeing on the pitch. They're, they're sitting in eighth, so it's not like it's a disaster start. They've got six points out of a possible 10. So it could be a lot worse considering that they've lost a game. 
but um, from a performance point of view, haven't looked like a side that people keep wanting to see out of the Sharks and uh, not an opportunity this weekend to show exactly what they're all about. Right, so Cardiff have had a very interesting start to the scenes. They currently sit fifth on the log and uh, very excited to see what they do this weekend because um, they're up against Scarlet, who have had a pretty awful start to the season. And a win for Cardiff could actually put themselves uh, in the top sort of three, depending on the results going on. At the moment, they are currently tied second. So a fifth of the log from a point of its point of view, but tied second with 11 points from three games. Now, yes, Lions, for example, sitting a, 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 a single point back with games in hand. But uh, a win for Cardiff, for example, could put them on 14, 15, um, so 15 or 16 points. And depending on how, what, how the results go, that could keep them in that top three. Now, given the fact that we saw no uh, Welsh sides really feature last season. It would be a very, very big opportunity. It would be very cool to see Cardiff really take sort of stride. I mean, in general, Ospreys have been the better sort of Welsh side in recent times, but I think this Cardiff side have got nice players. Um, Tears to Beer being one of them who came off the bench last week, and uh, they lost pretty heavily um, in, in, that, in, in that sort of first half, really. They kind of got blitzed a bit by the Glasgow Warriors, but came back into the second half, made some changes, and uh, in the end, 36-52, it is a bit of a big scoreline, but I think they were 33 points to 12 down and had a much better second half, which was very competitive. So you look at the the, the, the weekend before then, and uh, having already beaten the, the, the Scarlets, for example, big opportunity for them to go two for two and uh, to get themselves up that log early in the season. I think it's so important. They then host Bulls next weekend, so things are not going to get easier for them. But if they can get back to winning ways tomorrow, then I think they've got a big opportunity to keep themselves in the top 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 sort of four, top eight is the main thing. That'll be the main goal for the season. But get yourself in the top four and see if you can try and ride a bit of a wave. Three games, zero wins, zero draws, three points, minus 42 points difference. That is the start for Edinburgh. Not good enough. You know, I personally think both these Scottish sides should be in the top eight. Really, you look at the quality of how good Scotland is as a, as a nation, for example, the quality of players they've got. They've only got two sides to fill. And, you know, you can't be having, for example, in Edinburgh, which has got plenty of plenty of, of international players and great players sitting down in 15th with, with no wins after three. So Sean Everett under a lot of pressure early on in this season, and he needs to find a way of getting results he's got to find a way of getting this this, this this edinburgh side operating because if they were to go you know four losses in a row then i think his his job would potentially be at risk uh, this weekend he's got the stormers so it's not an easy game um, at all and uh he then goes they then host cardiff before finishing with ospreys um and then there's that month break now i think that if everywhere doesn't win the next three games at least the next two I think it could be sacked in that the November period. If he were to lose the next two games, for example, he'll be sitting, you know, zero wins out of five. I think they'd probably look to replace him in that sort of November period where they can get a new coach and get them uh, practicing and give them some time to sort of put everything together while the Autumn Internationals sort of take place. So those are sort of my main sort of key focal points for this weekend of URC. Hopefully try and give you guys a bit of direction in terms of what to look out for, what are the narratives over the weekend. Those are the ones I picked out. Let me know which ones you've picked out down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.